Use the arete. Flag. Do a dino. Drop knee. Nice send. Hi. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through some climbing terms you're almost certainly going to hear at the gym and what they mean. Let's do this. When you start climbing, um, particularly in indoor climbing, one of the things you'll notice is it's almost like people are speaking a different language. People are trying to help you, help you by shouting foreign sounding phrases that mean virtually nothing. Um, and there's an assumption in a lot of people that uh, everyone understands what these phrases are. So I thought it'd be fun just to go through what they mean and for some of them what their background is. When I looked up all the potential climbing terms we could talk about, I realised there's enough for a two hour video. Rather than bore you with lots of explanations, I thought I'd break them down into a few videos. So welcome to part one of climbing terms explained. In this video, I want to focus on ones that are about the wall or the features uh, or unattached to particular technique or things like that. So let's start with wall types. The first one is vert or short for vertical. And these are walls that are just straight up and down. I call them uprights, but they're called verticals. Some people call vertical slabs, but what slabs are actually are verts that lean away from you slightly. A typical slight slab will be five degrees, um, but they can be a wee bit more. You will hear people talking about how much they like slabs. I detest slabs. Watch out for a video coming about why that's the case. Opposite of, opposite of slabs are overhangs and overhangs go from very, very slight overhangs to incredibly steep overhangs, all the way to what would be called a roof or a cave. My favorite story of, of a very common climbing term is beta. Um, beta basically means the how to climb. It's the, the route you should follow if you're going to manage a climb. But how it came about, is fascinating. It's generally attributed to a climber from the 1980s called Jack Molesky. I know a lot of the people who watch this channel weren't around in the 1980s, but I remember the 1980s vividly. And we didn't have mobile phones with good cameras on it that we could video everything we did. But what Jack Molesky would do is he would video himself climbing things or trying things. But in the 1980s, video cameras were very different. They were big things with big full-size video cassettes in it. Around that time, there were two competing formats of video. Uh, there was VHS, which eventually won out, and there was one that was more common in consumer video cameras, which was Betamax. If you've not heard of these, speak to your parents, but Jack Molesky had a video camera that used Betamax, or Beta as it was called, and he would film himself and then he would share the, the video with people, and that came to be known as sharing the Beta, sharing the Betamax. Fast forward to 40 years later, and people just use it to mean how to climb things. Love that story. If there's any terms that you don't understand that you hear at the gym, then drop me a line in the comments and I'll talk about them in the next video. Crux. You might hear people talking about the crux. The crux is basically the hardest move in the climb. You might hear people talking about using the volume a volume is considered part of the wall. It will typically be very angular, um, sometimes rounded, but it's not a hold. But sometimes a volume will be set because you have to stand on it. There may be fewer footholds and you'll have to stand on a volume. And sometimes you may have a volume that has a, a sharp edge on it and rather than it holds on it, you'll actually use the volume with your hand. But really consider part of the wall rather than a hold. Sending is basically getting to the top. I had assumed this meant something. And when I looked into it, most of my research confirmed that the most likely origin of getting to the top of a climb being called send is, is just short for ascend. Um, 
so it makes sense in climbing however I've noticed sending being used in for example skateboarding or parkour where you're not really ascending so I think it's moved to just meaning succeeding so it can be used as a verb or a noun nice send might be something you would say to someone who succeeded in the climb or I'm going to try and send this. A flash is succeeding in sending the climb, getting to the top of the climb on your first attempt. Often you'll hear people talking about using the arete. In indoor climbing that typically means using the corner of the wall, the edge of the wall. The way I was taught to boulder, if you can reach the arete, you're allowed to use the arete. If setters don't want you to use the arete, then what they would typically do is put black tape or clearly mark it saying do not use arete. In indoor bouldering, um, a successful send is there will be a hold, typically the highest hold. It's considered sent when you match both hands on the top. However, some problems involve what's called a top out. And top out more closely matches a lot of outdoor bouldering, i.e. a successful send is getting to the top and actually standing on top of the boulder. Not every climbing centre has top out boulders and some of them may not be as tall. Um, for someone who's scared of heights, doesn't really matter how high it is standing on top there can be really nerve-wracking. The topo of a climb, uh, as far as I'm aware, you would only really see topo on an outdoor climb. Topo, basically short for topology, is a diagram showing the shape of the climb and typically with the, the root of the climb marked on it. So that's the end of the first video in Climbing Terms Explained. I hope that was helpful and maybe you'll be a little bit less confused if you hear some of this jargon getting thrown about at the gym. If you found this useful, drop me a like. If you have any climbing terms that you'd like me to explain in the next video, then drop me a comment. If you're not subscribed, then please consider subscribing. It'll really help the channel out. Remember to ring the bell so that you'll be informed when part two of this video gets published. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.